Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to talk about the ways that we can configure and tune the performance of security information and event management, or SIEM systems, to better meet the needs of your organization. And let's begin with a quick review of what SIEM systems do in the first place, and then we'll dive into ways that we can configure and tune them for better performance. Security information and event management, or SIEM systems, have two major functions on an enterprise network. First, they act as a central, secure collection point for log entries. Administrators configure all of their systems, network devices, and applications to send log records directly to the SIEM, and the SIEM stores them in a secure fashion where those logs are safe from unauthorized modification and they're available for analysis. Second, SIEM systems apply artificial intelligence to correlate all of those log entries and detect patterns of potential malicious activity. The great thing about a SIEM is that it has access to all of the log entries from across the organization. In a hierarchical organization, network engineers might have access to firewall logs, system engineers might have operating system logs, and application administrators may have application logs. That siloed approach means that attacks may go unnoticed if the signs of the attack are spread across multiple departments. Each administrator may see a piece of the puzzle, but nobody can put the whole picture together. And once you install a SIEM on your network, you'll need to configure it to understand your information assets and receive and process security information. The first task involved in configuring your SIEM is making sure that it has all of the relevant information about your network and systems available to process. You'll need to configure each of your devices and applications to send relevant log entries to the SIEM's centralized log repository. Once you've pointed these logs at the SIEM, the system can then begin analyzing them. The centralized log repository associated with the SIEM should be configured to act as what we call a WORM repository. That acronym stands for Write Once, Read Many. WORM means that once a system sends a log entry to the repository, that log entry is permanently recorded and can't be modified. Many users can read the information in the repository, but it isn't possible to edit that information. This prevents log tampering and makes it difficult for a malicious user to cover their tracks. The log repository also can notice when it's receiving similar alerts about the same event from multiple systems, correlate those, and perform event deduplication. Another important SIEM configuration task is synchronizing the time on systems that send entries to the repository. When you're reconstructing events, you want to be able to put things in the correct sequence, and this can be difficult if the log entry timestamps come from clocks that aren't in sync. Even if the clocks are off by just a few seconds, that can make analysis extremely difficult. The simple solution to this problem is using a centralized time server running the Network Time Protocol, NTP. The NTP protocol provides a standard way to quickly and easily synchronize all of the system clocks within an organization. You can use one of the national atomic clock servers as a time source for your NTP server, making it accurate to within a tiny fraction of a second. Those are some ways that we can better configure our SIEM. Next, we'll dive into tuning the SIEM to perform better. But before I do that, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. Once you have your SIEM up and running, you'll need to tune it to perform well and meet your organization's security needs. This involves tweaking the configuration until the SIEM is functioning in a manner that provides useful information to security administrators without causing them unnecessary work. One of the most important tasks of tuning a SIEM is modifying the rules so that the SIEM doesn't trigger a large number of false positive alerts. False positives occur when the SIEM triggers an alert but there really is no undesirable activity taking place. These false positive alerts waste the time of administrators and make them less likely to pay attention to future alerts from the SIEM. 
In addition to removing false positive alerts, administrators should tune the SIEM to not trigger alerts for trivial events or those that aren't important to their organization. For example, if you're running a web server that allows unencrypted connections on purpose, you wouldn't want the SIEM to have a rule that alerts on unencrypted web communications to that server. While that's not a false positive, it's still annoying, and it creates a lot of noise that makes it difficult for administrators to notice real problems. Now, out of the box, a SIEM can produce a large number of alerts that will drive administrators batty and cause them to begin to ignore future alerts. By investing time in tuning the SIEM, the device can become much more useful to the organization. I hope this video helped you better understand SIEM configuration and tuning. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more IT certification content.